Right now, the entire planet is feeling the effects of the coronavirus. It is a global pandemic that has drastically changed our lives. Everyone is struggling, whether infected with the virus or not. In the midst of such a devastating calamity, where is God? Where is God? Episode 4. Gains. Anyone connected to the fitness world is aware that the main objective for exercise enthusiasts is to make progress, to make gains. Gains can be in many forms, including more strength, larger muscles, and less body fat. Trainers typically guide gym goers to choose a specific fitness goal and then build a program that will get them there. Usually trainers track progress to evaluate whether gains are being made and then adjust the program accordingly. One of the most popular YouTube fitness trainers is Jeff Cavalier. He owns and operates the Athlean X channel, which regularly posts videos about how to make gains in the gym. His training videos follow a standard formula of diagnosing one exercise problem that limits gains and then correcting that problem to increase gains. For example, Cavalier's got a video on how people commonly mis-execute the pull-up exercise. He explains that to properly perform the pull-up, muscles that are not directly involved in the movement still need to be tense, like the chest, abdominals, and legs. He discusses how high your chin should rise above the bar and how wide your hand should be placed when gripping the bar. By the end of the video, he promises big gains in strength if the viewer heeds his recommendations. Cavalier's call to gains seems to resonate with quite a few people. Since this video has 2.5 million views, and his channel has nearly 10 million subscribers. Our series is entitled, Where is God? Because we are discussing how God relates to our lives, especially now that we are in the middle of a global pandemic. I want to draw your attention to the idea that gains should characterize your relationship with God. Where is God? God is with us in a life of spiritual gains. Just like how the body makes gains through physical exercise, our spirit makes gains through spiritual exercise. If you're hearing this and are unsure if you've been making spiritual gains with God, you're in the right place to find out how to change that. Many people are fuzzy on what they should do as they follow Jesus Christ. Besides not behaving badly and attending church services, many of us are confused about what we're supposed to do. This is unfortunate because just like physical fitness helps our physical body to see gains in physical ability, Spiritual fitness helps our spirit to see gains in spiritual ability. When someone needs you to use your physical body to help, let's say, replace a fence post, it's important that you are physically fit enough to be useful. How much more important is it when your friend needs you to use your spirit to help him process the death of a close family member? We need to be spiritually fit enough to help him. God called us to consistently make spiritual gains throughout our lives. Look at our key passage from Titus 2, 11 to 12. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age. In this verse, we find the concept of training, spiritual training, which God desires for us. God is our trainer, and He has provided goals for our spiritual training in this verse renouncing ungodliness and worldly passions, and living self-controlled, upright, and godly lives. These two objectives keep us focused on what the purpose of spiritual training is. We should be making gains in renouncing ungodliness and worldly passions and living self-controlled, upright, and godly lives. An important reason that I entitled this message Gains is because many people are stuck at some point in their spiritual training. Not all that different from the weightlifter who hasn't been able to increase the weight of his maximum bench press in years, many who follow Christ are not seeing gains in their spiritual lives. They may go to church, pray, and read their Bibles, but they don't see much change in their lives. This message is intended to help you to make changes that will produce spiritual gains. Some of you have only thought about spiritual things, but haven't really ever done spiritual activities. I want to tell you that Jesus Christ invites you to follow him on a path of spiritual action. It begins with turning from sin and turning to his grace. He will forgive your sin and give you spiritual life if you trust him. This trust, this faith is needed to begin making spiritual gains 
and to continue making spiritual gains. For those that already turned from sin to Jesus Christ, I want to tell you that the faith that you first used to trust Christ is the same faith that you will use to make spiritual gains. Many of us need to return to Jesus Christ for spiritual growth because we've been relying on other things for our growth. Just like with physical training, practice makes permanent. That's right, practice makes permanent. You see, the more you do something, the more you keep doing it the same way. If you do it right, you can say practice makes perfect. But if you do it wrong, you really can't say practice makes perfect. If our practice is to pray and then through self-reliance do our best to make the answers to our prayers happen how we want, we are really making our use of self-reliance more permanent. If our practice is to pray and then through faith trust God for the results, we are making our use of faith more permanent. I think that many of us who are not making fitness gains ask the same question that us who are not making spiritual gains are asking. What are we supposed to do? Fortunately, many authors have written on the subject drawing from the Bible and our Christian predecessors. One book that covers a variety of activities for spiritual training is Celebration of Discipline by Robert Foster. I'll include a link to it in the description below. Like a fitness coach providing exercises to train our physical bodies, Foster provides the reader 13 practices to train our spirits. Some of them may be more familiar to us, like prayer and Bible study, but others are less familiar, like solitude and biblical meditation. He organizes the spiritual activities in three categories, the inward disciplines, the outward disciplines, and the corporate disciplines. Authentic Christianity is really lived on all three of these fronts. None of us should practice a Christianity that is not evident in who we are inwardly, outwardly, and with other Christ followers. Foster makes a concerted effort to advise us to choose faith over willpower in our practice of spiritual activities. He cites Colossians 2, 20-23 to explain that we should not emphasize how much of our own self-control we can muster in our efforts to develop our spirits. Instead, we should view spiritual gains as a gift from God to be graciously received. Just like our passage from Titus 2, God's grace spiritually trains us. We trust Him for spiritual growth as we practice spiritual activities. When the focus lands on God, some of us feel that our role in spiritual gains is greatly diminished. We check out because the onus is on God for growth. We want what Maximus says in the movie Gladiator to be true. What we do in life echoes in eternity, but aren't sure what part we should play in our own spiritual growth. I want to tell you that God has not left us out of the process of spiritual growth. We are intimately involved. Listen to Philippians 2.12. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good, good pleasure. We work out our salvation and God works in us both. It is this united effort of God in us which produces spiritual gains. Again in Philippians 3.13-14, Paul reveals his attitude towards spiritual training when he says he strains forward to what lies ahead and he presses on towards the goal. He's saying that he puts great effort into making spiritual gains. From passages like these, it's easy to see that we play a crucial part in our own spiritual training. I encourage you to begin making spiritual gains during this time of difficulty. For some of us, our gains will be new faith in Jesus Christ, while for others, our gains will be renewed faith in Jesus Christ. Think of spiritual gains like fitness gains, but even more valuable to you. Spiritual gains will be with you throughout eternal life, whereas bodily gains will only be with you during this earthly life. Make a decision today about how you want to begin making spiritual gains and tell someone about it. When you tell someone, you've added some accountability to your decision, which will help ensure that you follow through with it. Decide if your gains will be in the form of Bible study, prayer, service to others, or some other activity. If you need ideas, find some resources like Celebration of Discipline to help you. As we ask where is God during this health emergency, we should think that God is with us in a life of spiritual gains. Memorizing scripture is an important way to keep God's word in your heart. For this episode, memorize part of Philippians 2.12, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for providing us grace that will train our spirits. 
through faith, we have joined with you in our spiritual growth. Help us to remain consistent in our spiritual practices so that we see spiritual gains. We want to grow to be more like your son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for listening to this message. Stay safe and God bless.